I'm Chris, and welcome to Disney Updates. Margie's running just a little bit. She'll be here in just a moment. She's just running a little slow, so she'll be in here here pretty soon. She had to take care of some things, but what? while we're waiting, let's go ahead and get started with the first piece of Disney news. So here we go. All right, starting off, this is coming from uh, sfgate.com. It says, Disney to take hit of 2.5 million per room at failed Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel. Wow, 2.5 million per room. And there was 100 rooms, I know that. Uh, scrapping the infamous Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel cost Disney... $250 million, the company announced in its quarterly earnings call last week. With only 100 guest rooms, that breaks down to $2.5 million per room for the failed venture. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Sandy. The Galactic Star Cruiser in Disney World was billed as a one-of-a-kind Star Cruiser experience. Each two-night bookings was meant to feel like boarding a cruise ship in outer space, and guests were given a mission involving characters from the most recent Star Wars trilogy. It was a gamble on a relative niche and expensive concept. So, yeah, uh, th I think they said probably one of the things that was failure is they should have used it on the original trilogy, is what the story should have been on. It says, but at about... $4,800 for a two-person cabin, the cheapest tier offered. Disney fans complained that it was simply too much for two days. In May, barely one year since opening, Disney announced it was shut shuttering the Galactic Star Cruiser. Said the company is now in the midst of writing off the expensive flop. At Wednesday's earning call, Disney attri attributed a dip in the theme park division to a decrease at Walt Disney World, primarily due to high cost, inflation, and acceleration deprivation, dep decimation related to the planned closure of Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser and lower volumes. Interim Chief Financial Officer Kevin Lansbury said the company is looking at an accelerated depreciation of $250 million for the Star Cruiser, which is in line with the earlier numbers given by the Disney Parks chair, Josh DeMauro, in May. DeMauro uh, estimated $100 million to $150 million in depreciation in both of the final two quarters of 2023. Revenue is still up in the Disney Park Experience and Products Division. However, for the third quarter, which ends July 1st, the division posted... 8.3 billion in revenue. So it says that it's not clear that what will happen to the warehouse like building where the Star Cruiser was housed. In May, a Disney spokesperson told SF Gate that there were no immediate plans for the for repurposing the space or integrating any of it into the Star Wars themed land in Hollywood Studios. The planning webpage on the Star Cruiser shows no availability for the remainder of its existence. The last day for the hotel is September 30th. So, uh, I think there, there was probably a lot of different things they could have done differently with this that may help it m succeed a little bit. Uh, I, I would say like maybe changing things up every once in a while. Like the show, I mean, the thing is, is I, if they would have put like the show on a rotation where they would have like, say, three months, uh, it's supposed to be part of the original trilogy, then another three months, it's supposed to be, because you got to understand that the whole entire uh, Star Wars took place within the hundred years that the Halcyon was a cruise ship. And uh, or Galactic Star Cruise or a cruiser that there was several different stories that could have been told on this this whole ship that they could have done, and uh, I think if they would have advertised it that way, 
maybe it would have had more interest, especially when you started to see that the numbers started dying out, that you could quickly start to change over to the new story, maybe to draw pe people back that had stayed there. But moving on. All right, this is coming from WDW News Today. So it says, Mirabelle meet and greet opening date announced Bruno joining Disney Adventure Friends Cavalcade at Magic Kingdom. Oops, hold on just a sec. All right, here we go. Uh, so to celebrate Hispanic and Latina, Latin, Latin American Heritage Month, which began on September 15th, Walt, which begins on September 15th, Walt Disney World has announced that two familiar faces from the animated film Encanto, Mirabelle and Bruno, will be making appearances at Magic Kingdom. It says, after a March announcement and permit. Filing in June, following by ongoing retheming of the fairy tale garden area, Walt Disney World has announced an opening date for the long awaited meet and greet at Magic Kingdom. Hello, Mary. So it says guests will be able to meet the heroine in her magical Casita Madriga starting September 15th at Magic Kingdom. This character greeting will be available year-round after Hispanic and Latin America Heritage Month, so don't worry if you can't make it to the park in September. So, this new meet-and-greet experience replaces the former Merida meet-and-greet in the fairy tale garden where it was located for several years. Prior to Merida's calling it home, guests called could meet Rapunzel and Flynn Rider there. Now guests can meet Merida and the Enchanted Glade Gazebo in Liberty Square. So, uh, Bruno joining Disney Adventure Friends Cavalcade. He said, uh, we will talk about it. Bruno will be joining the Disney Adventure Friends Cavalcade also at Magic Kingdom start, starting September 15th. This cavalcade was first introduced last year as part of the 50th anniversary celebration of Walt Disney World. You can watch the cavalcade and full in the video below. Uh, a casting call of Bruno lookalike performers was originally put out for Walt Disney World back in June, and now we know why. Bruno was one of the new characters. Oogie Boogie's Bash and Disney's California Adventures. And last year, see a video of this meet and greet below. There they are as the Sanderson pictures. What? I'm good, Mary. Well, that's Madam M. That's Ernesto, isn't it? Ernesto. Who's that? Hi, Sandy. Who's that? Who's that? So. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Mary. We got that to look forward to, right? Right. And I said hi to Sandy already, right? Yes. Oh, my hair's a hot mess. Here we go. Ready for this, Marge? Sure. This coming up. Oh. Uh, WDW Magic WDW News Today. 
New Tinkerbell light up lantern flies in Magic Kingdom. So uh, the new Tinkerbell light up lantern we spotted in Disneyland Park last month has finally made its way to Walt Disney World. Uh, we found it at the Big Top Souvenir Magic King Magic Kingdom. Here it is, Tinkerbell light up lantern for twenty four ninety nine. What do you think? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it says the light up lantern includes a figure of Tinkerbell inside, just like a scene in the 1953 animated film. So uh, the lantern itself is gold and has dark green silhouettes of flowers and butterflies around the two side windows and back window. I'm good, Mary. I hope you're doing well also. There is a jump ring attached to the top of the lantern. So you can hang its decoration if you'd like. Otherwise, the bottom is flat and can sit on a table or shelf just fine. It says only the front opening can be used to see Tinkerbell clearly. The other three windows are frosted. <laughs> it says here's what the lantern looks like with the lights on. So the lights come from the base of the lantern and fully illuminates Tinkerbell inside while giving a glowing effect to her wings. Hmm. The glow also makes the flower silhouettes more visible. So it's pretty neat. I like it. What do you think, Marge? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. Yep, I like it. Uh-huh. Moving on. Are you ready for this news, March? Ready? Yes. All right. Coming from WDWMagic.com, giant inflatable Mickey pumpkin goes missing from the Magic Kingdom's Auto Plaza. Huh. Huh. All right. There's a gallery. So it says Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween is now underway at Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom, but something is missing from this year's fall festival festivities the giant inflatable mickey pumpkins are not on display in their usual place atop the transportation and ticket center auto plaza hmm. maybe they just haven't put them out yet maybe so uh the two mickey pumpkins are usually stored in a large box during the daytime and inflated in the afternoon to greet guests arriving for a mickey's not so scary halloween so it looks like that. I don't. I guess we'd have been, so I wouldn't know if they were there. We noticed that the boxes were not in position because the first party and with two party nights now complete, <clears throat> there is still no sign of inflatables. Maybe they just decided not to use them this year. Maybe. So. Coming up next. What do you think is coming up next, March? I don't know. Star Wars. WDW News Today. All oh, Star Wars Galaxy's Ed Edge. A legacy lightsaber hilts now 30% off at Disney's Hollywood Studios. 30% off. I want this. I don't understand. Well, you do there we go. All right. So here we go. Uh, the sale is running through October 16th, 2023. While supplies last, the offer is only valid in stores and not on Shop Disney purchases. So uh, let's see. We found the collection of legacy lightsaber hilts clearly marked today on our trip to Doc Onder's Den of Antiquities. You got to be quick up there because they won't let you stand at the counter. Mm -hmm. All right. Each case of the lightsaber hilt has signage to indicate their inclusion in the sale. Uh, let's see. The discount is not stackable with other discounts such as Disney Vacation Club, annual pass holder, and cast member. All styles of lightsaber hilts, including variations on classic and film accurate combinations, are included. New legacy lightsaber collectibles hilts are included in the sale. 
Oh, wow. Hi, Mike. Hey, Mike. So moving right along. <laughs> Did you ever think we'd be talking about a lightsaber sale? No, really. <laughs> All right. Where were we? Right here? Yep. Let's do this one. All right. This is from Diz Dining. Steady confirms Disney is making its rides and shows shorter. Okay. So, uh, according to Joshua Harris, a Disney design, designer, historian, and futurist, the Walt Disney Company, specifically the Magic Kingdom Park at Walt Disney World, has been steadily reducing the amount of time guests enjoy attractions. Says uh, Magic Missing. A decade ago, he was walking around Magic Kingdom Park and felt that the once magical atmosphere had changed from how he remembered it. But he questioned whether or not his feelings were due to nostalgia over visiting the park when he was younger or if something had actually changed. As such, he decided to do some research and his findings were shocking. He built a timeline displaying every attraction that ever existed. Is, it, is that it existed? Yeah. Okay. Existed at the Magic Kingdom Park from its opening day in 1971 through 2021. Its 50th anniversary celebration once compiled, he added the time a guest spends enjoying a show, ride, or attraction. What was the result? If you entered the theme park in 1972, you would have spent four hours and 48 minutes on rides and attractions if you enjoyed every single attraction once. If you visited in the summer of 1992, you would have spent six hours and 45 minutes on the ride and attractions again if you enjoy each attraction once. This metric is surprising because it shows that over the first 20 years of Walt Disney World Resort, there was a 41% rise in the number of things to do in the theme park, making price increases justifiable throughout the 70s, 80s, and even the 90s. Says, uh, magic in the new millennia, but something happened in two, the 2000s. If you visited the park in October of 2021, you would have only spent three hours and 28 minutes enjoying attractions, a nearly 50% drop from the value of attractions time since 1992. To be fair, this figure predates the addition of Tron Life Cycle Run, but even including it, it only about a one minute ride bringing that figure to three hours and 29 minutes, still far less than the six hours and 45 minutes. Okay, so... Yeah. Is he counting all the rides that even are the ones that are down? What do you mean? Like uh, Splash Mountain? I'm sure he's just counting the rides that you can ride. Oh, okay. I just was wondering. Yeah. Uh, but what, what exactly happened? The Magic Kingdom didn't see a 50% decrease in its attractions. If anything, the number of attractions increased with addition, such as the Fantasyland expansion. Year over year, Disney be began a systemat systematically chip away at the time guests would enjoy existing attractions. For example, in 1992, the Country Bear Jamboree was 16 minutes long. Today, it's 11 minutes Similarly, the Enchanted Tiki Room was shortened as well. In addition, there were former attractions such as America Journey, which was a 19-minute long show, and in its place today is Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor, which produces a 10-minute long show. Likewise, there was the Walt Disney Store at, or Story at Magic Kingdom, a 22-minute film about Walt Disney, now a meet-and-greet location with Mickey Mouse. And even though there have been additions such as Tron Lights, Light Cycle Run, or the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train Roller Coaster, the park no longer has Mission to Mars, or the subsequent Alien Encounter, Stitch's Great Escape, or the Snow White's Dark Ride. So presumably, many of these changes were to accommodate higher volumes of people in shorter times, frames, and allow guests or time to shop, eat, and spend money within the park. But whatever the reason, it's something to remember as the price of a one-day ticket goes up at a rate 10 times that of inflation. 
and you still may have to purchase individual lightning lanes or Genie Plus to enjoy all the attractions in a single day. That's not true. I don't believe it. So, price per hour. These infographics also show another interesting metric, the price you pay per hour to enjoy the attraction. That is to say, the cost of emission is divided by the time required to enjoy the attractions. In 1992, this figure was about $10 per hour. Today, after adjusting for inflation, you're looking at about $46 these numbers do not include the price of parking, Genie Plus, or Lightning Lane. Uh, what was that? Forty-six dollars. It doesn't say per hour, does it? But it did. It did. So maybe if Walt Disney World Resort is struggling to keep their park attendance up year after year, they may want to begin by investing more into their theme park and increasing the value they provide. Otherwise, tomorrow may not be as great, big, and beautiful as Disney hopes. <laughs> the longest ride was Splash Mountain, I think, like 15 minutes, Mike says. He also says, let's all pray for Emma. Uh, is that talking, Mickey? Yeah. She's in the hospital with gastric issues. Oh, wow. Well, I will be praying for her. Actually, I, I believe... I believe... Uh, the carousel progress is longer than what if I'm Is it a twenty two minute ride? I'm not sure. We'd have to look it up. Oh I'll, I'll look it up. How long is Pirates of the Caribbean? I don't think it's that long. What's he what did Mike say? Park rides are like reachable batteries, take so long to charge them, and when you use them they run down fast the lines have a ride are so long and the ride is over in minutes. I feel like, yeah, the lines are longer than the ride, but I don't know. I like waiting in line. Right. What was I looking at? Uh, the length of uh, oh, yeah. Carousel Progress. Twenty one minutes. Twenty one minutes. Oh, it's off by a minute. So, all right, moving on. Uh, the Disney Tourist Blog. So here we go. Win a stay in Cinderella Castle Suite. This has been a while since they've offered this. So, uh, staying in the Cinderella Castle Suite at Magic Kingdom is a bucket list dream for lots of Walt Disney World fans, and now. It'll be possible for the first time in forever, thanks to Give Kids the World. This covers details of the giveaway and fundraiser, what's included in the exclusive vacation package, the actual retail value of the night inside the suite, and much more. We've been fortunate enough to step inside the Cinderella Castle suite twice, and it's absolutely incredible. The accommodations are truly fit for royalty with regal attention to detail and lavish flourish, flourishing everywhere you look. For those fans who bemoan who hotel rooms at Walt Disney World are becoming generic and unthemed, this is the exact opposite of that. Every inch of the Cinderella Castle Suite is meticulously detailed and thoughtfully themed. Not only that, but the design is incredibly clever, showcasing Imagineering at the top of its design game. Space in the suite is utilized brilliantly, transforming what's in reality a pretty small space into something that feels extravagant. For those unfamiliar with it, the Cinderella Castle Suite is actually a relatively recent addition that's not nearly as old as the 50-plus year uh, old centerpiece of Magic Kingdom. The Cinderella Castle Suite opened in January 2007, and its purpose at that time was to serve as a daily prize or for, ra for randomly chosen guests during the year of a million dreams. Prior to that, it was a utilitarian backstage storage space. Before that, Walt Disney phone operators used it as a workspace. The Cinderella Castle Suite is seldom used these days, save for giveaways or when celebrities like Mariah Carey or Tom Cruise make a special visit. So 
they were talking about the year of a million dreams. And we actually visited more than once during that time. And I think I might have showed this before, but this was something that we won while we were there for the for the so this we didn't we didn't use them because we weren't staying there. But uh we were we we were on our last day and we used to our last day used to be a park hopper day. So we would uh park hop and hit the rides we didn't get the first time we went through. So we were at uh Tower of Terror and we were in the library, you know, where you see the episode of the Twilight Zone. And uh, before they moved us on, they stopped us. And everybody who was in there won this, which was a uh, Disney MGM Studios Dream Fast Pass. So it was a fast pass for for every ride they had. So it says Indiana Jones. Epic Stunt Spectacular, Lights, Motor, Action, Extreme Stunt Show, Rock and Roller Coaster, Starring Aerosmith, uh, Voyage of the Little Mer Mermaid, The Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror, and Star Tours. So, we'll, like I said, we didn't get to use it, but it was it's something that was neat that we actually got to, to keep. And we have four of these. So, <laughs> but uh, I think another one we had was something that we didn't get to keep. We were at Magic Kingdom and we were stopped. And when we were stopped, they asked us if there was any uh, characters we hadn't met that we would like to meet. And, you know, of course, we had had one and, you know, it wasn't the one that they were talking about. But we got to go and spend time with a character with no line, no rushing us out of the way or anything like that. As much time as we wanted, as many pictures we wanted to take with Cinderella. So it was pretty neat. Uh, when you buy new shoes and there's a bit tight, and you don't have a shoe stretcher, put a gallon Ziploc in each shoe and fill them with water and tie the bag shut and freeze it. Dice will expand. Oh, wow. Stretch the shoes out. Wow. So, uh, let's see. Uh, so it says, uh, honestly, we haven't heard anything about celebrity stays at get or giveaways in the Cinderella Castle suite for most of the last three years. In today's era of social media, we'd probably have a pretty good idea if The Rock, Ryan Gosling, Blake Lively, or other Disney obsessed celebrities or frequent film stars recently had the chance to spend the night in Cinderella's castle. Given that the last big push for the Cinderella Castle Suite was in 2019, our guess is that the last few years of staffing shortages and things slowly going back to normal have put a pause on plans to use the space. According to our hope is that the new Give Kids the World fundraiser that offers the chance to win a stay in the Cinderella Castle Suite is yet another sign that nature is healing and the coolest hotel room and all of Walt Disney World will once again be used more frequently. So if you want to see some of the pictures, there's some of the pictures here. So anywhere, let's dig into the details of the giveaway. All right. So it says Give Kids the World's Village is offering the Chance for one lucky winner and three guests to enjoy a once-in-a-lifetime magical celebration vacation. From August 16, 2023 through October 6, 2023 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern, Disney fans can enter for the chance to stay overnight inside Cinderella's Castle Suite. Uh, and be treated like royalty during the unique fairy tale experience. But there's more to, be, to the prize package than just one enchanting evening. This dream Walt Disney World vacation package includes the following. One night stay at the Cinderella Castle Suite in Magic Kingdom for up to four persons. Breakfast for up to four persons at Cinderella's Royal Table to the, the morning of your checkout from Cinderella's Castle Suite. Two night resort stay in a standard room at the Deluxe at a deluxe resort subject to availability for up to four persons. 
up to four three-day theme park tickets with park hopper option for three days of fun for up to four persons. A $500 Disney gift card for winner prize winner. Domestic round trip coach airfare for the prize winner and their travel party. Up, up to four persons. Provide the prize winner and travel party reside outside a 200 mile radius of Orlando from the major United States Gateway Airport closest to the prize winner's residence to the Orlando International Airport. So here, this is another part of it. This is like kind of walking into the front of the suite. It says, behind the Cinderella Castle glowing stained glass window, the Cinderella Castle suite is a study in opulence uh, designed to resemble a 17th century French chateau. The ornate decorated Cinderella Castle suite features coffered ceilings, an antique limestone fireplace topped with a magical portrait of Cinderella, elaborate mosaic and murals, and luxurious furnishing fits for a princess or prince, plus a gilded clock stuck permanently at 11.59 p.m. since Cinderella's magic spell ended at midnight. So, Prize package recipients are not the only ones who will come away with cherishing memories for a lifetime. Proceeds from the coveted chance to win will benefit Give Kids the World Village, an 89-acre whimsical nonprofit resort in Central Florida that provides critically ill children and their families from around the world with life-changing, week-long, cost-free va wish vacations. Give Kids the World vacation includes transportation, accommodations, all meals, and snacks, donated theme park tickets to the Walt Disney World Resort, and other area attractions, nightly entertainment, daily gifts, and more. Since 1986, more than 180,000 Wish families from all 50 states and 77 countries have been welcomed to the village to spend priceless time together away from hospital stays and medical treatments. We are grateful to our wonderful friends at Walt Disney World Resort for their tremendous generosity, said Give Kids the World President and CEO Pamela Landwer. With the village full, support is needed now more than ever before to ensure we can and continue our 37-year legacy of creating happiness, promoting optimism, and inspiring hope for the precious wish families we serve. And what a truly magical way of making that possible. So just some more pictures of what the suite looks like. So check in for the Cinderella suite is at 4 p.m. and check out is at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. The two-night resort stay at the Deluxe Resort Hotel may take place before or after the stay at the Cinderella Castle Suite. Travel for this Walt Disney World vacation package must be completed by November 30th, 2024, and is subject to availability and blockout dates. Advanced reservations are required and requests mu requests must be submitted 90 days in advance and confirmed at least 45 days prior to arrival. The uh, ARV is $9,300. Oh, that's how much it would cost. To stay in the castle? No, the, for the whole entire package. The value of the va vacation package may vary depending on dates of stay, points of departure, and fluctuation of rates and airfare. Any difference between the ARV and the actual value of the prize will not be awarded. There are a bunch of other disclaimer rules and requirements that can be found in the contest rules. Thank you, Mike. So the most important two things that the approximate retail value of the uh, vacation value package is $9,308. This is the estimated value of the entire Walt Disney World vacation package, and not just the night in the Cinderella Castle. Uh, this means that we can take the known approximate cost of everything else in the package, remove those from the equation, and come up with the ballpark price for the for a night in Cinderella's Castle Suite, at least according to Walt Disney World. So here, breakfast Cinderella Royal Table for four, $260. Two-night deluxe resort standard room stay, 938 to 2558 2, Three-day park hopper tickets for... Four, four hundred nineteen to five hundred eighty. A uh, five hundred dollar Disney gift card for prize winner, five hundred dollars. Airfare for five hundred 
for four eight hundred to two thousand. Total is two thousand nine hundred and seventeen to five hundred and five thousand eight hundred and ninety eight. So obviously that's a huge range and still imperfect because airfare is such a wild card and the potential party price could also vary. Nevertheless, from that, we could, can conclude that Walt Disney World considers the approximate retail value of the one night in the Cinderella Castle Suite is, or, is to be around $3,410 to $6,391. That might seem like a lot of money, but it's almost certain, certainly way too low if we're trying to determine the fair market value or what people would pay for a night in the Cinderella Castle Suite and an open and free market. So just more, more pictures of the I suite. wouldn't pay that much or stay in there. I wouldn't want to stay in there, I don't think. I don't I don't know, do they? You would even if we won the prize, you wouldn't want to stay in there? I don't know. It looks. I don't know. It looks what? It looks what? I don't know. Like very cramped. Oh, oh my gosh, Margie! It's just for one night. One night. Gee. Yeah, I didn't like my hair. It was this bad? Why didn't you tell me? I. Did. Here we go. This is coming from All Ears. Uh oh. All Ears.net. Five changes happening in Disney World in September. What do you think they are, Marge? I don't know. Five changes. Five. Five. All right. Disney's 100th an anniversary celebration begins in Epcot. There's a lot happening in Epcot in September, as you may know. Disney is currently celebrating its 100th anniversary, and soon the party will make its way to Epcot, Margie. Epcot. Did you know that? There it is, Epcot. Yep. Yeah. Um, Mike says, what kind of camera does Spider-Man use? A webcam. <laughs> MCO is part of the Disney bubble since none of the stores hey, Jerry. sell gum. MCO Airport was a backup landing strip for the space shuttle, having a very long 15,000 feet of runway. <laughs> well, howdy. All right. Oh, it's a not Jerry. I'm sorry. It's the hitchhiking boat. I, <laughs> I thought it said hat box goes at first, and I'm wrong. <laughs> so uh, on September 22nd, Epcot will receive several new additions for the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney World. Look out for a new Platinum Mickey Mouse statue, which will be a great, great photo op. A character meet and greet with Mickey and Minnie in, at the Imagination Pavilion. In their new Disney 100 outfits and a new nighttime spaceship Earth light show. Hmm. So. Uh-oh. Uh-oh what? Somebody just yelled at that All right. Uh, these special offerings will... Be around from September 22nd through December 31st. So to be sure to head to Epcot before the end of the year if you want to see the changes. So I don't think we're going to get to see them, right? Probably not. So uh, also the coming, changes coming no in worries. September. Don't worry, Ghost is a cousin of ours from the mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Destination D23. One of the biggest Disney fan events of the year is coming to Disney World soon. Destination D23 will be taking place right in Disney World from September 8th to the 10th. So, if you're familiar with Destination D23, is a special event. What? Unfamiliar. Unfamiliar. Destination D23 is a special event where Disney fans meet to check out the latest Disney innovations, see exclusive first look, and enjoy... Special guest appearances. <coughs> so. Also, new Epcot Food and Wine booth will join the festival. The beloved Epcot Food and Wine Festival officially started in July 27th, but even more booths will join in the, or the festival in September. So mark your calendars on September 22nd. Four new booths will open at Epcot's International Food and Wine Festival. 
that date might look familiar. It's because these festival food booths are also part of the Disney 100 celebration coming to Epcot. Huh. Let's see. Uh, the four booths set to open in September are Char and Chop, a Wine and Wedge, Bubble and Breen, or Brine, and Swirled Showcase. We have already look, looking forward to the Mickey-shaped liquid nitro cake coming to the Swirled Showcase booth. You can see some of the other snacks arriving at these four booths right there. Also, Happily Ever After showing Showtime change in September. So this is an important is important. So listen up. Beginning of September 18th, 2023, Magic Kingdom's Happily Ever After fireworks will start at 8:30 p.m. nightly. So the showtime is known to move around a bit depending on the time of year. At one point, the show happened every night at 9:20 p.m. Then on August 9th, Happily Ever After started at 9 p.m. nightly. Then in September, the time will change again. So uh, extending extending evening hours returns. A big perk is finally returning to Disney's Hollywood Studios. The extended evening hour perk is exclusively for those staying at deluxe Disney World hotels, deluxe villas, and additional select hotels. Guests have the chance to stick around in the select parks after the park closes for traditional guests. According to Disney's extended evening hours website, this exclusive perk will be available at Hollywood Studios on select nights this fall. Currently, Disney's Hollywood Studios extended evening hours dates include September 30th, October 5th, October 11th, October 19th, and October 25th, 2023. Why did you do something that crashed with my sound system? I thought it was here. And I think it's it. No, the dog's barked. <clears throat> right? Mm-hmm. All right. So. I'm trying to keep an eye on the dogs. I think somebody was yelling out. So let's see. That, that was that. So that was five changes happening in Disney World in September. So we got next. This is one of Margie's favorite things. Joffrey's introduced a new edition, new limited edition Disney Villains coffee collection. This is coming from the Diz. Uh, it says, I know we've got some Joffrey's Coffee fans out there in our Diz community. So listen up because we have some news you might want to hear. Joffrey's Coffee and Tea have introduced a new limited edition flavor coffee with a Disney theme that has us intrigued. It's the Disney Villains Coffee Collection. Flavors include Disney. Disney's Have a Bite Brew, Disney Sea Witch Brew, and Disney Dragon Roast Brew. I like Joffrey's coffee, but I don't like the dark blend. Yeah. I like so. the medium or the light. Right. All right. I'll be right back. I, I can't let them keep yelling at the dogs. All right. So if you guys like Joffrey's coffee, we like Joffrey's coffee. Uh, we pick Joffrey's coffee over uh, Starbucks every time we're at Disney. So I'm just not a Starbucks fan. All right, but it did look delicious. It's their coffee. Uh, I didn't see if it said any more. So it's the Disney Have a Bite Brew, Disney Sea Witch Brew, and the Disney Bros. So uh, I was gonna see. Is there? Did it say? Talk about what the differences were between them. It doesn't look like it. So usually you can read the side of the bag, but it's a little too small to read what what it is. Uh. Let me see if I can. I know I don't have it up there for you, but let me see if I can. All right. So the Have a Bite Brew is a tantalizing brew with notes of apple, caramel, and cinnamon, because of course it's the one for the Evil Queen. So, and it's a medium roast. Uh, the Sea Witch Brew is a bewitched brew with notes of caramelized sugar, vanilla, and dark chocolate. That's a medium as well. And then the Dragon Roast Brew, which is Maleficent. The last one, obviously, was Ursula. A spellbound brew with notes of pecan, caramel, and vanilla. Right. 
right? Right, Marjan? Yeah, I don't know what you said, but Disney villains copy hope it's not poison. <laughs> we prefer Joffrey's copy too. A mission to s'mores latte at reviving tomorrow. That's my favorite. Mm. I don't like s'mores, but yeah, I would try at least once. Right, right. So, uh, Adam, Blank, and Reba. Or oh, okay. So, uh, this is coming from. Next up, we have from WDW News Today. So, for eighteen hundred dollars, it's a small world hippo figurine made of salvaged redwood, available at Disney Springs. So there it is. And eighteen hundred dollars. It's a small world small world hippo figurine is available at Walt Disney World Resort. The figurine is made out of salvaged ancient redwood trees by Ron and John Daniels of Daniel Woodland. It's a bit available at the art of Disney store in Disney Springs. It's cute, but it's a big fat Margie. So the figurine hippo. looks like the hippo animatronic that is on multiple versions of it's a small world, though it has a brown finish that most closely resembles the hippo on the Disneyland version of the ride, which is pink with with five pelleted flowers across it across it and a bird perched on top. It's cute, but it's not no eighteen hundred dollars. Well, but it's made out of redwood. <laughs> Mike, you're what? too much. I know the kind of car Mary Carol drives. A cat alack. <laughs> <laughs> So the figurine is intricately carved with even the feathers of the bird's wings visible. Hmm. Okay, let me ask this. If it was not the hippo, but... The hyena. The hyena. I still think it was cute, but still not $1,800 <laughs> cute. So it says, during the D23 Expo last year, Disney announced that they would be teaming up with Daniel Wood Land to salvage trees that had completed their circle of life and recycled them to into keepsake Disney products. And the live tree must be removed from Disney's parks for safety, but the upcycling process gives them a second life and supports sustainability. So it uh, is cute, but yeah. I just don't think eighteen hundred dollars cute. Eighteen hundred dollars. Looks like a piggy bank slash hippo. Yeah. All right. Hippos. Hip, 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 hop, a nod on If this. Chris wasn't allergic to cats, I think we'd have a cat. Yeah, I'm allergic to cats. I'm like, I, mean, I still don't think we'd have cats. You don't think so? No. Look at Thor and Loki. They were really good. Mm, sure. I won't have I mm -hmm. would take a cat like Thor and Loki. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> this coming up from a Disney tourist blog. Best snacks at 2000, uh, 2023 Epcot Food and Wine Festival. What do you think the best snacks are, Mark? Oh, that, that looks snack. pretty amazing. Well, that's not even it. So, I love spending time with my three cats, Adam, Blake, and Reba. So, all right, here we go. It says, let's start with a few preparatory notes before and starting with the colossal caveat. That four global marketplaces still have opening opened. This may not seem like a big deal, but it is. This only brand new boost, char and chops, wine and wedge, bubbles and brine, and swirled showcase are scheduled to debut on September 26th. Not only are they the only new booths, but these four look like they have the strongest and most exciting menus of all the global markets at the 2023 Epcot Food and Wine. Festival. Honest, honestly, even without having a chance to taste test any of those dishes, I'd be willing to bet that at least half of this list would have been replaced by dishes or entire booths had Char and Chop, Wine and Wedges, Bubble and Brine, and Swirled Showcase opened at the same time as everything else. Oh no, Mike, let me think about that and then I'll get back with you at the end of the show for the answer. <laughs> So it says, on that note, it's important to point out that taste may vary. Parts of the reason were 
excited for the new booths that are that they look much more ambitious and vigorous than the current lineup. Frankly, it pains me to include so much comfort cuisine and proud, pleasing dishes on the list. A foodie festival should push the envelope more, but the reality is that the best dishes for now at the 2023 Epcot Food and Wine Festival are largely the most approachable ones. So, Good one, Mary. Let's see. I was looking to see, do they have a list? I really wish it would oh, tell us what they are. So it says, everything, flavor of America, previously hops and bar barley, the reimagined into flavors of America with an almost all new menu, breathe new life into this current burnout booth. The, I don't know what that says. Chickilies? Chip I don't know. Chickilies or whatever. And Italian beef sandwich in particular are among the best Dishes of the entire festival both deliver a surprising amount of complexity to otherwise ordinary dishes and value for money on both is incredibly strong. Then there's the Chiapanino or whatever. As explained in our booth review, the sum of the parts is more than the whole here. And we'd ordered this again. As a result, it is tremendous portions of spectacular seafood for the price. In our view, the weakest dish here is the sugar-forward, freshly baked carrot cake. But even that is far from bad, and you should almost certainly give it a try from an option for yourself, as the carrot cake at, is almost universally beloved. We've, we're have we in the minority on it, so with that in mind, order everything. I probably would only like the carrot cake. I don't know. I have a question about this, though. Okay. So... At food and wine, I know it. You don't get a very big portion, right, of, of the food there, right. But they don't serve those after food and wine's over anywhere, right? Or I don't am think I wrong? So. I don't think so. No. See, that's what I don't like because you find something you like at food and wine, and then you can only have it. Yeah, but a lot of times they bring it back. So the next year, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, well, why you gotta wait a year? So everything flavors from fire. The bad news is that flavors from fire. Booth is a shadow of its former self and has been for the last three years. The good news is that the global marketplace at the 2023 Epcot Food and Wine Festival is the best incarnation of the food since 2019. As a result, we have once again recommend that you order the works at Flavors Fire. So, that's it. Does it say what that stuff is? Yes. It says, if you want to, or it says, uh, let's see. Okay, I see right there. If you want to opt for only one Smoked item. corned beef with house-made potato chips, cheese curds, pickled onions, and beer cheese fondue. That's on top. Uh, which, is, which is on top. <laughs> All right. It says, this has been one of the top five dishes for as long as it's been on the menu. And that's true again this year. It's smoked corned beef on a bed of house-made potato chips with a fondue drizzle to top off. The fondue is complex and the corned beef is lean and tender with the ex excellent smokiness. It's a perfect marriage of flavors and ambitious comfort food that's perfect for the fall. So which one is it? Is it is this, this one? I don't know. Says, with that said, the other items also shine to varying degrees. Everything in the Chimichurri marinated skirt steak taco is fantastic. I'm going to say that's this, right? No. I don't know. All right. But the tortilla itself is rubbery and the price is high. The Impossible Burger Slider is a plant based standout, but I'll admit to being. Disappointed that Flavors from Fire isn't a carnivore paradise. Then there's the Spiced Chocolate Tart, which is an excellent dessert that's far better than the formula tart often found at Epcot festivals. This dessert is highly recommended. The clear second best dish at the Flavors from Fire. Oh, we're glad you joined too. So, all right. 
everything from India. I don't think India. we're going to be able to read them all. No, we're not. So we'll, we'll probably just go through. We'll look if there's, we see something interesting. Uh, this says it's it's a lamb. That is lamb. That's what it says. That doesn't look like lamb. It says roasted lamb chops, Australia. I've I've never had lamb. Have you? If I have, I didn't know. All right. Oysters oh, Rockefeller. That was. Oh, is that what that is? Oysters Rockefeller. I don't know. Oh, that, I, yeah, okay. Yeah. This is the okay. This is lamb. Okay. So, uh, this is oysters Rock Rockefeller. I've never had oysters. I have. I would. I would try that. Uh, there's the Kalula pork, pork sliders from I Hawaii. I would try that. I don't know what this is. It didn't say. Oh, yeah. that's over the. Can you go back down? Let me see. Oh no, it's not. Never mind. Maybe it's farther down. I don't know. Kenya, co coffee barbecue barbecue tenderloin. beef tenderloin. Hmm. Or maybe that was. Maybe that I don't know. No, uh, grilled cheese. I don't grease. I don't know if that's what that. No, maybe I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna say yeah. That was Brazil. Brazil. Yeah, that was. Oh, really. this is a pickle milkshake. I don't know. Everybody says that it's not that bad. You hear me? I, like, is it dill pickles? It. They said it just has it. Like, it's it's. Somebody said it's comparable to the shamrock shake that you get at McDonald's, mm -hmm. except for it has a little bit of dill to it. I don't like the shamrock shake, the minty milkshake. Yeah. I don't like that. So I doubt I would like the. I don't know. I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever tried it. The shamrock shake. It's just minty. Obviously, I've never tried the, the dill. What did we have the other night? Hat box go. Hey, Jerry. Hi. What did we have the other night? And I said, it's minty. And Haley's like, oh, I'll eat that. I don't know. Oh. We, it was when Lori, we went, Lori, Haley, and I went over to Asian Buffet. How would I remember that? I wasn't even with you. And I ta I went to taste taste this stuff. I thought it was like pistachio. So I'm like, oh, I love pistachio. So I take a big bite. And I'm like, ew. <laughs> like, this is nothing but mint. It was like eating a peppermint. And Haley's like, I'll take that. <laughs> At the same restaurant, we were getting takeout. And I had a universal TV remote on me. And I got the code to the TV. Oh my goodness! And they couldn't figure out how the channel was changing. That's terrible. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is coming from AllEars.net. Uh, exclusive event announced for Disney Springs. The Edison is a great place for food, drinks, and dancing. It's been a while since we've gone out dancing. I can. I think I can tell you the last time I went dancing. It was at Chloe's party. Oh wow! The Edison is an innovative 1920s. Industrial themed. Here, I'll pop this up so we we'll give you something to look at. Industrial themed uh, restaurant in Disney Springs. It's not only known for its great food, but also for its creative specialty cocktails. Regularly, we see them doing mixology series events where guests can get elevated food and special ed edition cocktails. In September, we're seeing them pair up with a local Orlando organization during their mixology series for a cause. The Edison is partnering with the Pet Alliance of Greater Orlando for the September Mixology Series. This series will include special edition cocktails, bites, and silent auctions with a portion of the proceeds going to the benefit the Pet Alliance of Greater Orlando. The special menu of food and cocktails have been inspired by the furry friends at the Pet Alliance. You'll see drinks such as the Meow. Meow Ito. Meow Ito. Ito, right? Meow Ito. The Salty Chihuahua, the Best Buds, and the Palmetto Brewing Rescue Brew. I should have said the, what is pretty called? Angry Chihuahua. <laughs> so the silent auction will include prizes for restaurants and hotels and the near Disney Springs. Kennedy Space Center ticket mixology event at the Edison and more. A portion of these proceeds will go to the Pet Alliance. Per their website, the organization works to provide compassionate and knowledgeable services for pets and to be leaders in innovative animal care and sheltering. 
I would so go to one of those just to, to help that cause. The special edition cocktail will be available from August 14th to September 15th with the event happening on September 14th. Tickets are $85 plus per person. You may also have the option to upgrade your ticket to the platinum upgrade for $40. This will include your choice of a one ounce pour of Whistle Pig Old World Rye Whiskey 12 years or a three ounce pour of 2018 Silver Oak Cabernet Sauvignon Pours will also be, oh, Savion. Uh, pours will also be pairing with a five Wagyu pastrami and house baked. Is that Fashada mm. and Dijon Nays? Talk about fancy. Talk about fancy. I don't need anything with my whiskey, just the whiskey. Is that the whi- that's the whiskey they're talking about? So. So the Meow Hito <laughs> is Bacardi Rum, Rosemary Mint, Lemon and Soda. The Salty Chihuahua is Patron Silver, <laughs> Blackberry Basil Compound Syrup, Florida Orange Liqueur, Lime, Half Salt Rim, The Best Buds, Zero Proof, Cream of Coconut, Coconut Milk, Cinnamon, Blueberries and Lime, Palmetto Brewing Rescue Brew, Lager, and the food menu sounds amazing. So they have the Hamachi... So that's tacos, yuzu, guacamole, I don't know. Chicken Caesar salad bites, kushi oysters and pearls, uh, vegan chili cheese, potato skins, and deviled two egg. times eggs. What, what is that? How do, you, how do you devil it an egg twice? I don't know. Mike said they went to a restaurant one time. He ordered the poo-poo platter. He got the chopsticks, and he was burning them and the waiter kept going over to smell the Christmas lights because he felt they were <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey checking Boone says to Hatbox Ghost, nice to see you materialize this evening. <laughs> <laughs> and he replied, decided to haunt a few of you tonight. Ha. Ah. So we got a little bit over, so maybe you wanna <laughs> do you wanna finish out the last two or it's up to you. All right. Here we go. This is coming from Diz Dining. We'll just go through them real quick. This is one. Baby admission to Disney World equals $300. I don't know. Walt Disney World Resort currently lists the price of admission for children under three years old as free. Mm-hmm. So, but that's not the entire truth. In actual actuality, the cost of bringing a baby or a toddler to the theme park resort could be $300 or more. Depending on your little one and the size of your party, I'll explain. Several hidden expenses will turn that fee free admission into a cost higher than a one day adult ticket. And what's worse is your little one can't even enjoy the big rides and, in some cases, may not even be able to stay awake for fireworks or other nighttime shows like Phantasmic. When bringing your little one to the theme park, there are many expenses for them to enjoy, such as rides like Dumbo or It's a Small World and, well, and as well as the chance to meet Mickey Mouse and other Disney characters. However, those attractions are not the main priority their comfort is. So, holding a baby or toddler in line for an hour because you can't bring strollers in the queue and they may not be able to walk yet can be more than an infant or small child can handle. You're almost forced to purchase individual lightning lanes and Genie Plus to save them and yourself. The discomfort and frustration of standing in endless lines every day of your vacation. Okay, one, I would never take a baby to Walt Disney World. Correct? We've never taken No. One. Our kids have always been, what, three? Chris can read very good. Just don't ask him to do any math. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's you know, that? I don't know. Do you... Am I right? What? I'm... I, I, our, our, our child. We never took them. We were three. Mm-hmm. That's why I just. Heaven was three. <laughs> yeah. And Haley didn't go until she was four. Right. So even if you are only a part of two, those individual lightning lanes. So that, okay, no, that, this is something, this is what this person is saying. So, all right. So indoor dining when visiting Disney's. Can be ridiculous hot and humid, and often unbearable for adults and older children, but it's not even safe for little ones. And indoor table service dining 
is a fantastic way to beat that heat. Of course, that will cost you another. Let's just. Yeah, this is this is. I mean, th- them saying this kind of stuff. This just seems like somebody said, "Ah, I need an article. Hey, let's show how it costs actually a lot of money to take a baby." Uh, are they are they talking now transportation? Why? Because you don't want to take your baby on the bus. This is a. I feel like they're reaching. Well, let's just get out of this one and go to the next. <laughs> but one. you know what I'm saying? The strollers are more. I mean, so unless you bring a stroller there that they're all right with. Okay. Watch your information closely. We are going to Disney in October to celebrate our 50th anniversary. We went there on our honeymoon in 1973. All right. This is the last one. Hopefully. Oh, wow. So uh, Disney makes new investments in Florida schools and students with a $125,000 donation. Congrats on your 50th anniversary. Yeah. So way to hang in there, Jerry. Rude. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Walt Disney World Resorts today announced its latest investment in Florida education, including $125,000 in donations and support school districts in Osceola Lake, Polk, and Seminole counties. These funds will be used to expand workforce development and early learning student programs. Our company is very much rooted in storytelling, so supporting the future storytellers in our community is critical, said uh, Tijuana and Cor Brown, Director of External Affairs at Walt Disney World Resorts. Career dreams begin in the classroom, and we're helping students build a solid foundation to pursue those dreams and become who they imagine they can be. This donation joins ongoing efforts like Disney World's annual back-to-school supply drive benefits, a gift for teaching, Disney World has teamed up with a gift for teaching for decades and it is the organization's lead sponsor. As the largest support supply drive in the state, Disney World and its cast members collected more than 177,000 in essential school supplies and monetary donations this summer to help get Florida students and teachers the resources they need to succeed in the classroom throughout the school year. Very cool. Very cool. So, but I think that's going to do it. Thank you guys for joining us. And uh, let's see. I was, well, I was supposed to have a video out, I think, yesterday. I didn't get that out. I was going to get it out today. I don't know if I'm going to get it out today. So uh, let's shoot for a video tomorrow. So other than that, uh, we have... Disney updates on Monday. Trivia on Tuesday. Trivia on Tuesday. And then Disney updates again on Thursday. Thursday. But other than that, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I'm hoping to get those videos out. But it's just, it, it's, I don't know what it's, it's just been a long week for some reason. You know what I mean? But. I don't think it's been a long week. I don't know. It seems like it. But. Other than that, thank you guys all for joining us, and I hope to catch you on the next Disney updates. Yes, and have a great weekend. Yes, have a great weekend. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. If I can find where to press the button. There we go. (laughs) Wave, Margie.